Good morning, everyone. Hey, welcome. Hey, great to see everyone. Okay, so we can just take a deep breath and feel ourselves arrive here, becoming present. Invite the Holy Spirit and just open the mind to what it is that wants to be explored and expanded today. The best you can, just release your thoughts from this morning. Just come to this open place in the mind. It's a gift to come together. For the purpose of experiencing what is true. And this morning I was reflecting on projection. Projection makes perception. And I thought we'd dive into this topic with the Holy Spirit as our guide. Because we cannot ponder this one enough as long as we experience any sort of difference and as long as we believe in linear time and I was drawn to section called your brother's sinlessness your brother's sinlessness and this is from chapter 22 in the course part two and it starts this one by saying the opposite of illusions is not disillusionment but truth the opposite of illusions isn't disillusionment but truth. So only to the ego does it seem like only illusions or disillusionment are the two alternatives. And that would be that would be a prison, right? If only illusions or disillusionment were the two possible options. But that's what the ego teaches us. That's what the belief is. There's so much fear of awakening. So if we don't hold on to illusions, we think we're going to be disillusioned. But actually, the opposite of illusions is truth. And he's going to dive into this topic here. But he, first he explains that both Illusions and disillusionment bring the same amount of misery, though each one seems to be the way to lose the misery the other brings. Every illusion carries pain and suffering in the dark folds of the heavy garments in which it hides its nothingness. Every illusion carries pain and suffering. Truth is the opposite of illusions because it offers joy. What else but joy could be the opposite of misery? It's an easy conclusion. To leave one kind of misery and seek another is hardly an escape. So here is a little warning from Jesus. 
to leave one kind of misery and seek another is hardly an escape. And this is this is the state of of this world. It's, you know, never being really content and seeking, seeking and seeking other illusions. This is just a fearful, superficial way of being based in fear of awakening. Yeah, to change illusions is to make no change. The search for joy in misery is senseless. For how could joy be found in misery? All that is possible in the dark world of misery is to select some aspects out of it, see them as different and define the difference as joy. Yet to perceive a difference where none exists will surely fail to make a different difference. He's saying somewhere else too that all the roadways of the world lead to death. And he says, on some you will travel gaily for a while. <laughs> but he, he says that literally all the roadways of the world lead to death. And there are times when we think, oh, I found it. I found something great and we travel gaily for a while. We think we're happy for a while, but all of all the choices in form lead to death. This is why we, we are in, in great need of a guide, of the inner guide to give us the way out. And he can use the things we believe in we're so afraid of awakening that we still cling to forms, different forms. So let him show which form he can use for our highest good. That's why guidance is such a gift. We can, can be guided and we can surrender. Even guidance can be um, rejected because of the fear of the end. Fear of the goal and means sometimes get rejected because of the fear of the end, the end, end meaning goal, not the ending. Hmm. Illusions carry only guilt and suffering, sickness and death to their believers. The form in which they are accepted is irrelevant. No form of misery in reason's eyes can be confused with joy. Joy is eternal. You can be sure indeed that any seeming happiness that does not last is really fear. Any seeming happiness that does not last is fear. Any seeming happiness that does not last is fear. He says, too, that nothing that doesn't last forever is worth striving for. So this is, a good, this is some good guidelines right here. We can, in our mind, when we get lost in choosing illusions, choosing between illusions, we can just say, does it last forever? Inside our mind, and then we, we know, yes or no, that doesn't last forever. Okay, give it over. Doesn't matter. Let him show you. There's no need to get so worried about illusions. It's a much greater gift to see that that is just fear. That is just a superficial focus. It comes from fear. Joy is eternal. Joy does not turn to sorrow, for the eternal cannot change. But sorrow can be turned to joy, for time gives way to the eternal. Only the timeless must remain unchanged, but everything in time can change with the time. Yet if the change be real and not imagined, illusions must give way to truth and not to other dreams that are but equally unreal. 
this is no difference. It is clear here. He wants us to wake up. He doesn't want us to rest in dreams and go, oh, now I found a comfortable illusion where I feel safe. No, just keep, keep going, keep questioning every illusion. Yeah, reason will tell you that the only way to escape from misery is to recognize it and go the other way. Truth is the same and misery the same, but they are different from each other in every way, in every instance and without exception. I wanted to come to this um, teaching around projection. So it talks about one decision, let me see here. Yeah, you must choose between yourself and an illusion of yourself. You know what your creator wills is possible, but what you made believes it is not so. What you made of yourself believes that what your creator wills is impossible. So now must you choose between yourself and an illusion of yourself. This is this, you know, the mind training is actually letting go of yourself, constant questioning of that self that the ego made. Give it over. Every moment, just give over that self. Otherwise, there will be no joy. So you must choose between yourself and an illusion of yourself, not both, but one. You can only choose one of them. Faith and belief can, uh, can fall to either side, but reason tells you misery lies only on one side and joy upon the other. Forsake not now your brother, for you who are the same will not decide alone nor differently. Forsake not now your brother, for you who are the same will not decide alone nor differently. Either you give each other life or death. Either you're each other's savior or his judge, offering him sanctuary or condemnation. This course will be believed entirely or not at all. For it is wholly true or wholly false and cannot be but partially believed. And you will either escape from misery entirely or not at all. Reason will tell you that there is no middle ground where you can pause uncertainly waiting to choose between the joy of heaven and the misery of hell. Until you choose heaven, you're, you are in hell and misery. You know, sometimes I think we believe that we can pause and, and think, well, I'll have it fairly good for a time and then I will choose heaven later. That's choosing hell. We can only choose one or the other in the present moment. So there's no time. There's no time to rest in illusion. Only in God can we rest. There is no part of heaven you can take and weave into illusions. Nor is there one illusion you can enter heaven with. A savior cannot be a judge, nor mercy, condemnation. Ambition cannot damn, but only bless. Whose function is to save, will save. How he will do it is beyond your understanding, but when must be your choice? Okay, this is important, I feel. How he will do it is beyond your understanding, how the savior will save. You don't need to understand, but when must be your choice. You can say yes to be the vessel for the savior. For time you made and time you can command, you decide in time 
how you use your mind. It's very clear. We can't hide from that one. Can't say we're a victim to anything. You're no more slave to time than the world you made. Let us look closer at the whole illusion that what you made has power to enslave its maker. This is the same belief that caused the separation. The belief that what you made has the power to enslave its maker. It is the meaningless idea that thoughts can leave the thinker's mind, be different from it, and in opposition to it. That your thoughts that are so powerful suddenly go out, make up a world that can attack you, enslave you, because there's so much fear of the power of the mind. This is what seems to happen. This is why he needs to talk to us about this. So he wants to look closer at the whole illusion of what you made as the power to enslave its maker. This is the same belief that caused the separation. It is the meaningless idea. The thoughts can leave the thinker's mind, be different from it, and in opposition to it. If this were true, thoughts would not be the mind's extensions, but its enemies. And here we see again another form of the same fundamental illusion we have seen many times before. Only if it were possible the Son of God could leave his father's mind, make himself different, and oppose his will, would it be possible that the self he made and all it made should be his master. Only if we can be separate from God can this, this happen. That the self he made and all it made should be his master. This is a person. This is a this is believing you are the person and, and at the mercy of the world that you were born by two parents and they raised you, maybe not so well sometimes, and you're a victim to a whole big world that is not offering you your own good. It's not out to, to be kind to you. So this is, he, he, we need to see this, we need to accept this, even if we don't understand it, you know, understanding with a limited mind is impossible, but we can be open to be shown, you know, because we, an experience is what will save us, what will show us the way out, experience of the truth. In the meantime, this is actually helpful to get these metaphysics clear in the mind. So here, behold the great projection, but look on it with a decision that it must be healed and not with fear. Behold the great projection, look at it. Don't avoid anything. What makes you fearful may be worse, maybe different kind of torture, abuse, incest. Think of the worst things. These are a great projection, the grand illusion that was made to make you seem a slave. He's saying, look at it with a decision that it must be healed and not with fear. We can look with anything, we can look at anything without fear. If we invite spirit to look with us, this is, this is the way out. Nothing you made has any power over you unless you still would be apart from your creator and with, with a will opposed to his. Nothing you made has any power over you unless you still would be apart from your creator. 
and with a, a will opposed to his. Here, there is another part of the course where he talks about the difference between an imprisoned will and free will. And so this would be the imprisoned will if you think you have a will opposed to his. If you think that something you made has the power over you, something fearful in the illusion, if you think it has power over you, you still choose to be apart from your creator, he says. This is really good news because you there he's telling us there is a safe place. <laughs> there is a safe place within where we are one with God. And from that place, you can look, look at what the ego made, what made us fearful, what seemed to have consequences in terms of all kinds of things. Sickness or mental incapacity or fear, different patterns. But nothing has the power over our mind if we go within and look at it with God, if we don't separate ourselves. Only if you, if you would believe his son could be his enemy, does it seem possible that what you made is yours? Only if the son of God could be God's enemy. Does it seem possible that what you made is yours? Saying it's not even yours. You don't even need to take ownership of the craziness of the illusion. Where does shame come from? I think shame comes from thinking it is yours, like family shame or, you know, the, yeah, the shame that can come up in certain groups or families. That's the belief that it is yours, that you have some sort of connection to what you made, that you have that you own it or that it is still yours. We can question this. And all the mystery you made has been your own, is the belief then. Are you not glad to learn it is not true? Is it not welcome news to hear not one of the illusions that you made replaced the truth? Not one of the illusions was able to really replace the truth. It seemed so. It seemed so. And there was a lot of suffering coming from that belief that it could replace the truth. But none of the illusion has the power to replace the truth. Only your thoughts have been impossible. Salvation cannot be. Salvation cannot be impossible. It is impossible to look upon your savior as your enemy and recognize him. This is where forgiveness I'm saying It's impossible to look, to, to recognize your savior and see him, who he, see him as he is. And it is possible to recognize him for what he is, if God would have it so. What God has given to your holy relationship is there. But what he gave the Holy Spirit to give to you, he gave. Would you not look upon the Savior that has been given you? And would you not exchange in gratitude the function of an ex executed execution you gave him for the one he has in truth? Receive of him what God has given him for you, not what you tried to give yourself. So if we ever feel angry at somebody or we think they did something to us, that was our gift, quote, gift to ourself. Instead, he says, receive of him what God has given him for you. And this, we need the Holy Spirit. We, we are in great need of the Holy Spirit 
to know what God gave through our brother. Because I think it's a mixed bag. It's, it's not, you know, with every human being you can think of, you see a difference. You see what they gave to you. But that was your gift to yourself. That they are, it, it is a blank slate where the ego projected all kinds of things to tell you how bad you are or how small you are or that you are a victim. So these are the ones that we need to forgive so we can receive what God has given us through them. Beyond the body that you interpose between you and your brother and shining in the golden light that reaches it from the bright endless circle that extends forever is your holy relationship, beloved of God himself. Beyond the body that you interpose between you and your brother and shining in the golden light that reaches it from the bright endless circle that extends forever is your holy relationship beloved of God himself. So what needs forgiveness? The body. The bodies. The bodies that seem to be able to squirm, control time. So no, no. I'm, I'm going to keep a little gap. I'm going to stay away. I'm going to decide how to use my time. Bodies can seem to do that. You know, and but he points out beyond the bodies is this beautiful holy relationship so we can give over even the bodies and our time and how we perceive bodies i think it's a gift in, in, if you think of how you perceive people you can learn something about your own beliefs you think you learn something about them but no, that's the trick. <laughs> Some people say, I'm so good at reading people. Or, I'm so good at seeing how they, how they are doing, or where they are at. And who, you know, it's, it's one, the, the self that sees it, that can see, okay, this is what I believe. So, yeah, so, so then it's so beautiful how you, can see your brother in this shiny place. So he asks, are you willing to see your brother's sinlessness? It says somewhere else, you shouldn't ask, you shouldn't try to say, I want to try to see my brother without his body. But you can ask yourself, do I want to see him sinless? Do I want him to be guiltless or do I, do I want him to be guilty? This is a very helpful question to ask if you find difficulty with somebody. If you feel they're angry at you or if you're angry at them or there's some issue up, ask, do I want to really see this one sinless? This is the way out. Sometimes we need to contemplate this and take some time sometimes it's just the quickest decision ever because of course of course i want to see them sinless and then we often then we have a miracle and perception changes and reflections change i had that one time i was with a, a, a sister her friend we were driving we were on a, on a mission or on a tour together to do gatherings. And these are the times where, I, in my experience, there have been the most healing is to be out with someone on a mission. There's so much healing in between the times of extending in the gatherings. You can't believe sometimes five minutes or an hour before a gathering, it can be just so intense between, you know, these two that are going to extend. Because the ego, the ego doesn't want the truth to shine. So I've learned 
Well, do it anyway. Show up. Be there. Holy Spirit will use you. Don't let that shut you down. And so this time I was out with her and we were driving to a place where we were going to have a gathering and I couldn't stand her. There was something so intense between us. I felt like she was, she was just the biggest obstacle to my peace of mind. I thought, I, I don't really remember the issue. I mean, she was snoring and there was different things like that going on. I felt like I couldn't sleep well at night because of her. But there were other things. And I was so angry at her. And she seemed to hate me in that moment. She seemed to hate me. And I I was there in the car. She was driving in you know, small cars. We were sitting really close. And I was sitting there in this intense feeling, like no way out. And I, I just made this prayer. I just said, I need a miracle. I need to see her differently. I want to see her differently. I want to see her sinless because I can't stand this. And in that moment, she turns to me with the biggest smile. In the moment, I said within, I said, I want to see her sinless. She turns to me with the biggest smile and says, I love you. And it was this amazing moment. And, you know, and I was like, Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And thank I thank myself for having the, the sincere prayer, you know, because every sincere prayer is answered. There is no way it can't be, you know. So, so that was a beautiful experience, a very direct reflection of a shift. And this is it. And it can be, you know, we can feel like we're at the end of... Um, at the end of our rope sometimes you know and we feel like the world is so difficult and but in that moment it's usually one in my experience that there is a shift because the prayer is very sincere which is kind of a sad way of of traveling of, of coming to god like that we have to have pain you know before we realize what our true desire is, but often this is the case in this world. It's uh, yeah, but we can also skip over that, and we can become so sincere in choosing the right mind and the right direction of our thoughts before we get to those points. Does anyone have any reflections on this? Oh. I just wanted to say that's uh, very helpful, your example. That's very helpful. And I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I'm glad. Yeah. 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 yeah thank you. Yeah. yeah, that's it. I mean, this is what he was questioning in the beginning of this section I just read. Like, if you believe that illusions can imprison you. No, we, we may believe that sometimes, but that's where we need, we can easily question this. So, Julie. Hello. Good to see you. Thank you, and you. <laughs> yeah, it's, the topic of happiness is like on my mind. And, um, you know, if I see another brother and they seemingly look unhappy, <laughs> um. There's this idea that they could be happy and then they could be more happy or something. Mm. I want them to be more happy. So it's actually myself. Obviously, I'm seeing myself yeah. less than happy or the idea that I can be more happy. <laughs> um, and of course, what to forgive in that is the version of me that thinks it's unhappy or the Julie that looks unhappy or something, because there is only happiness. Yeah. yeah, so it's about appearances. Yeah. <laughs> it has appearances deceive, appearances but deceive. He says, go into your mind and clear your mind. And then, then you will, you know, you, you will actually not look at appearances. You will come from a place of peace. And then, yeah, the reflections will look pretty good, but... You know, you won't, you won't determine what's going on, but the, the projection can be so quick that you, that you, 
you think they are unhappy yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> but this is you know it's a collaborative venture salvation is collaborative and this is where we can we are mighty companions for each other and we can talk about things you know but if there is a desire to project there's no need to even try talking because it's going to be <laughs> clashes you know clashes of interest yeah. but if one interest and one intention you can go so deep with someone when there is a desire for healing yeah yeah thank you for sharing yeah it can be a preoccupation with others or what's going on with them they they're so unhappy but we didn't do our own inner work if we're so you know constantly focused on others you know yeah it's good it's time to take it a step further yeah you can carry on sorry i've got another thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um I've been working in a school on Friday with an autistic boy. I think he was about five years old. Um, and it's very interesting. <laughs> Again, this is observation. So I see him and what he wants to do is whatever he's told not to do. So if he's told don't do that, he, he wants to go to do that. He wants to seemingly do the wrong thing. Mm. <laughs> So I'm asking, you know, why am I seeing this? Why am I with this boy <laughs> that wants to yeah. do the wrong thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that feels like a good pondering to, to, to look at and see maybe how that can help you to choose what do you want? Yeah. What is your highest mm -hmm. desire? Yeah. Yeah, and I want to see him sinless, like you say, like... um. You know, he's the love of God. He's the absolute eternal love of God. And I just I observed how other teachers coped with him or something. And, they, it, you know, they weren't finding it easy. And yet mm. this was my assignment to look after him. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite yeah. Yeah. It was so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he just wanted to play with water, you know, or yeah, things like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, sometimes you need to go um give them something even more interesting. I feel that's how the Holy Spirit works with us. Not by saying, no, don't do that. This is even in the course, don't do that. Because he even points that out that you will, you will go and do that. You say, don't do that. He says, um, I don't know what the words Jesus uses in the course, but like give give the gift of something greater, you know. Maybe you find some things that are even more interesting for this boy that you can collaborate, you can join together and have fun. Yes, you know? that's what I wanted to do, you know, and I I feel like I want to scoop up those children that and um, give them, because I home educated my son and I see that what they offer in schools is not what these children want. They can't do conventional school. They don't want, know what's going and on. And I mean it, I mean it as an example of how, what God gives us, what, what spirit gives us. It's such a greater gift than what we gave ourselves, you know, because we're doing exactly what that boy is doing in this world. It's a clear example. Like, no, I, I'm going to do exactly the opposite of what what I'm told, what I'm given, what I'm offered. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. glorify a small self and make my own decisions. And but he didn't seem conscious of it. That was the thing. You know, he wasn't like... Yeah, are you conscious? Were you conscious when you cre made this dream up? Well, no. No. Thing, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that's how that's how strong it is the illusion it has such a hold you don't even know you made it yeah yeah but yeah it's like every time you read any meaning or interpret matthew's face or arif's face or you know people around you can you can ponder this like 
Oh, what is God's gift? What is God's gift, really? This is what I gave myself when I misinterpret my brother or when I project something, you know? Um, okay, no, I, I want to know the gift of God instead. And what a beautiful practice with that boy. Yeah, and sometimes it's I find it difficult whether I have to say something to the person or not. You know, just be quiet or speak. <laughs> I think you, you need to be quiet and ask the Holy Spirit what the Holy Spirit would have you say, if anything. And if you're with a companion that you trust, you can say, um, I want to explore my mind. I have this reception. Are you available? We can, can we have a talk, you know? Yeah, because there's something around respect with that, isn't there? Yes, totally. Because otherwise you attack. If you, if you want to talk to fix them or see what's going on with them or you know if it's not yeah if it's not like holding space it's more like I'm better than you or I can you know then it's then it's an attack so not so helpful yeah mm -hmm. so usually silence is very helpful, at least for a while. Yes, <laughs> and Matthew's been asking for silence, and um, yeah, I find that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> He's inviting you to steal your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a take it as a sign of oh, maybe there is a deeper way of communicating, a deeper way of joining. I think maybe. there's a belief in me that I'm feel silenced by the world or not heard by the world, and that can make me feel angry. That why is this world not listening? Something like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that's the world you made up that way. And maybe even when you were a child, you didn't feel heard or seen or... Oh, definitely. Yeah, so it's like a pattern. But to see the mind that made, made that up, like to make that dream in that way, you know, and, and he can actually be so... can clear it so deeply that even it can heal. Those seemingly strong patterns can heal just by looking with the Holy Spirit. I'm not heard. It's a belief. It's a false belief. And to ask who or what is it that wants to be heard? And why? Does it actually, is that actually needed? Does it actually have something to contribute? I was guided to keep my mouth shut for most of the time during a long period of my mind training. Spirit showed me and told me, you don't really have anything to contribute. <laughs> that, was, that was like shocking and it was like eating humble pie. Was, you know, like, oh, I don't have anything to contribute. Nothing. And many times it was, came up, but I, I can help here. I have something smart or good or helpful to contribute. It was like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mm. And it was helpful for me. It wasn't that I was disturbing or it was, you know, it was just meaningless. And it, I realized, oh, it's for my mind. I'm the one healing. I'm the one needing to release this being heard thing, this idea that I'm not heard. I just had a thought there that it's the suffering one that isn't being heard. Like there must be something in me that wants to express something about, oh, but there's some suffering. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is the suffering? Can we question it? Can we look at the sufferer and let her go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. It's good. 
It's like a good topic. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, anybody else? Yeah. Um, thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah, you all. I'm here because I wanted to join with like-minded people. I'm not, or, or well, to to be with my own focus again. I I find it hard to um, in daily life to uh to stay with my focus and to keep my eyes on the light and uh um it's, it's happened so often that i'm getting conversational or giggly or, or pleasing or whatever um yeah and it, it just helps me to be with people with an, a different focus yeah. yeah yeah the reminders are very helpful yeah I think Andre is a great support in that. He doesn't realize probably, but he's so clear and and present nowadays. And every time when I see him, uh, he reminds me of yeah. uh, of my wish, my desire to stay there. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good sign that you're tired of the persona of the one who wants to be or tries to be nice and yeah kind <laughs> to others or you know yeah yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. that's it jesus doesn't need our persona or spirit doesn't need our persona mm. unless we think it is godly or you know <laughs> but we get tired of it <laughs> yeah yeah mm. Yeah, and to make a picture of myself the other day is to uh, for some purpose, and uh, and I was I was looking at my own face. That was very helpful, and and seeing the same photo smile on every picture, and and I decided not to do it, and I saw it again, and it, it just kept on being there uh, until I made a picture, and 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 I did. <laughs> and then I made a picture that was very funny and I started laughing and it and at once I I had a different perspective and, and mm -hmm. looking at my own struggle and <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. But sometimes it's it takes it takes something. It takes an effort to Yeah. 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 Sometimes just a change is helpful. Just a to mm. something differently or to yeah to change yeah. Mm. 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 yeah thank you yeah thank you yeah yeah so helpful to be with like-minded and get out of the ego's comfort zone and to yeah so we wanna we wanna really get so clear, just experience the extending instead of the projection. Mm -hmm. So say, take it, take my mind, take it all, God, take it all, Spirit. Jesus says, trust not your good intentions. They're not uh, enough and you're just reward. Let's see. Trust, no, you are. Gonna look it up. Trust not your good intentions. They are not enough, but trust in implicitly your willingness, whatever else may enter. Concentrate only on this and be not disturbed that shadows surround it. Don't be concerned that the willingness is not perfect, but trust your willingness. That is why you came. You came here because shadows surrounded your willingness. If you could come without them, without the shadows, you would not need a holy instant. 
come to it not in arrogance assuming that you must achieve the state its coming brings with it the miracle of the holy instant lies in your willingness to let it be what it is and in your willingness for this lies also your acceptance of yourself as you are meant to be A beautiful paragraph this is the little willingness chapter 18 part 4 paragraph 2 That's not your good intentions. I think we often have good intentions and we kind of rely on our good intentions, but they don't make us happy. Trust your willingness for truth, your willingness for, yeah, for only the one. Good intentions can make a nice setting and make things nice but we don't want nice we want truth I don't know for some reason I get this image of like yeah actually of a human being <laughs> how you know making a new home or establishing safety like if you if you're um, called to move out of a place, move into another place, you want to make it nice. You want to establish safety. It's like it's a meaningless race, meaningless focus. It's not wrong to make space nice or you know practical, but. The image I see is this, you know, dwelling in illusion, this constantly making it the same, even, even when there is a change, but our calling is deeper. We can keep giving over the form over and over and over. And watch that ego wanting to make the form safe all the time. So I think we'll end this satsang with the lesson of today. It's lesson 279. Creation's freedom promises my own. Creation's freedom promises my own. What a good lesson when we're talking about freedom. Jesus asks us somewhere, do you want freedom of the body or freedom of the mind? For both you cannot have. Realize you actually want freedom of the mind only. So creation's freedom promises my own. The end of dreams is promised me because God's son is not abandoned by his love. Topic of abandonment, <laughs> sorry. The end of dreams is promised because God's son is not abandoned by God's love. Only in dreams is there a time when he appears to be in prison and awaits a future freedom, if it be at all. Only in dreams. There is a time when Son of God appears to be in prison and awaits future freedom. I didn't know Jesus had all of these themes in the lesson about prison and abandonment, everything we spoke about, freedom. Yet in reality, his dreams are gone with truth established in their place. And now is freedom his already? Should I wait in chains? which have been severed for release when God is offering me freedom now? Should I wait in chains when God is offering me freedom now? I will accept your promises today and give my faith to them. My father loves the son whom he created as his own. Would you withhold the gifts you gave to me? 
What a beautiful lesson. Creation's freedom promises my own. So this lesson leads us right into questioning whatever limits we have placed on God's son, on our on ourself, and whatever limits we believe in. So you can allow yourself just to release people, release situations. Just stay in this open willingness. And you can even see it like give yourself a break. So as we finish this session today, keep in mind to give yourself a break. Just sit with God and, and be open. Ask him for your next step, your next move, if there is anything to do. You can rest your holy mind. Give over the persona. Okay, love you all. See you.